Hi, everybody. Welcome to the March 9th, 2023 meeting of the Hadley Climate Change Committee. We have four members here, and we are going to begin. And we are beginning with Dan Regish, who is an invited guest, um, sharing about the Russell School Committee. Hello, I'm Dan Regish, um, member of the Russell School Committee. Um, also been a member of the Municipal Building Committee since 2014, um, where we, we saw these new buildings go up. It was quite exciting. Uh, but now we've formed the Russell School Committee, um, whose original purview was to uh, gather information from the town and, and sort of decipher from that what the majority of town would like to do with the Russell School Building. Um, I'm, I'll try to keep my uh, uh, comments and whatnot uh, aligned with what your committee does. And I don't want to go too far out of that. Of course, there's lots of things that, that uh, you know, lots of aspects that need to be talked about, but I'll try to keep it narrowed down to climate change issues. Um, we're trying to gain support uh, for uh, reuse of the building and bringing back to use for town offices. Or, um, we've gone through, the Municipal Building Committee has gone through the exercises of putting out an RFP to see if a private developer would come and, and buy the building or, or fix it up. And um, that didn't pan out. The one uh, developer uh, who did show up, uh, who does this type of work very successfully in the Valley, uh, gave his two cents and said that it's, it's just not in the right position, it's not the right configuration, it's not the right size. Um, was that Barry Roberts? That was Barry Roberts. And huh. uh, he, you know, it, it, wouldn't, it, it wouldn't make sense for him unless we just gave it to him for a dollar and let him do whatever he wants to, to make it work for him. He's a developer, he does this for money. So um, so that, that didn't pan out. I mean, could that... Could we, Nobody else showed interest besides him. There was one other person that that backed out and never showed up at the meeting. Um, you know, could we could we uh, put that RFP out again? Sure, we could. Was this was it offered like we were going to stabilize the building, or just offer it as just it is? unload it as is? Oh, okay. Um, there was no interest in stabilizing it and then offering it. Uh, well, we did. We never got that far. That that was a couple well, of years back. That was, one of that was just before choices. COVID, just before quarantine. Um, anyway, so subsequently, a Russell School Committee was formed um, during quarantine. It didn't work out. It dissolved quickly, uh, but the committee was reestablished, and new members came aboard, and we were tasked with finding out what what the majority of town wants. So, we that's when we put out that survey. Did there, every, did, yeah. did everyone? Yeah. In, in the room, at least some of the people in the room did the survey, and uh, the results came back that you know the majority of people in town um, would like to see the building saved and reused for town offices or our own municipal use. So uh, we took that information, and um, so we're you know now we're overstepping our boundaries as a committee, and we're you know we're what we're doing is we're approaching and, and, and configuring, configuring uh, an application for CPA money to at least stabilize the building so that we can have the option. It, um, the, the state of the building right now um, is critical. Um, it's, it's very strong. It's a very strong building. Uh, I was there today in a meeting with the fire chief and uh, building inspector, buildings maintenance uh, person, uh, two people from the uh, Architectural Heritage Foundation, um, town administrator. We all went through the building and gave a quick tour uh, to see if we could get the people from the Heritage Foundation to to give us a hand figuring out what, you know what what the next step should be. Um, what did they say? Uh, they their uh, mo is more like. Um, uh, mass development where they they try to get the building into private development and try to get it you know and and they can help municipalities uh, uh, get grants and whatnot 
um, it's less successful. So it, you know they'll, they're willing to help and put some time into it, um, but certainly you know they're not going to go whole hog. You know this is this just you know, it's not something they're going to make a, a bunch of headway on. So would they Amen. like to see the building stabilized and then yeah, they could help offer it? Right. Yeah, they can help us narrow down the paths for stabilization and reuse. And, you know, they, they're they not going to go deep into it. They, they're not an architect, and they can't, you know, give us bid specs or anything like that. Right. So, But they can help us uh, along the way. Um, so we're out as a committee trying to, you know, we've, we've drawn up a draft um, application for CPA money. CPA looked at it, and, you know, they you know, had some concerns about, um, you know, the the uh, the future plan it, it's not as solid as they'd like to see because it, you know at that point we didn't have we didn't say that we want this to be town hall we just said we want to stabilize the building and for them that's not enough information they want to know what the future plan is after stabilization so that they have they have a, a more concrete uh, picture of what is what's going to happen make sure the they're not wasting their money right they you know they certainly you know and I I, I you know, we are not a uh, rogue spendthrift committee trying to pour, you know, million and a half dollars into a listing soggy barn. We, this is a very strong <laughs> municipal building. It was built to take abuse. It was built for live load. Um, Do you know the building we're talking about? Yeah, it's across from Hopkins, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not far from here. And a number of us in this room, the number is at least two, maybe more of us, um, went to school there. Oh, really? It was absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. The building itself was gorgeous. The light, and you know, even as a sixth grader, you know, sitting there, yeah, it was wonderful. A fifth and sixth grader. Yeah, a very impressionable it's times in my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I mean, but you know, all in all, that's not exactly why I'm in, in this. I mean, you know, personally, you want to ask me personally, I'm thinking of the future generations and what they deserve and what they need to have to run this town properly. Mm -hmm. um, I know that the existing town hall that we're stuffed into now is a property that's about half the size. Mm -hmm. The existing town hall is 54 years older than the Russell mm -hmm. School building. The original town hall was built as a one-story structure and added on in 1909 to accommodate a growing town. So, in fact, the town hall hasn't been expanded to accommodate growing town in over 114 years. Mm -hmm. So we would have a use for the Russell Building if yes. we fixed it. Yes, right. Uh, where our focus now is to give it a definite purpose, and this is to, to uh, bring it up to modern standards, put a real elevator in it. The town hall has a lift. That it's a wheelchair lift. Yeah. People are afraid to go in it. Um, so, you know, we, you know, we seek to stabilize the building so that within a uh, uh, five to ten year time span, we can have a new elevator and we can bring the building up to energy codes at least for the foreseeable future. How do you get around the problem of fixing up the building? You have to pay prevailing wage and things like that. Well, you, uh, much of it you don't. Um, the, the, um, the exterior and much of the historical uh, aspects of it um, can be, you know, we can use CPA money. and. That's that's money that that uh, is not going to raise our taxes. Yeah. In fact, if we tear it down, you can't get CPA money to tear it down. Yeah. So your taxes go up if you tear it down. Um, and a tremendous amount of waste. A tremendous amount of waste, and well, that's where beautiful. you know. And here we are at Climate Change Committee. You know, and we, you know, it's been identified by uh, the original study on the building that it would be uh, a much less of a carbon footprint to just save the building and reuse it than it would to tear it down or take it down and rebuild something new. Um, there's a lot of cost and carbon uh, associated with any kind of materials delivery, manufacturing. So if you tear it down, there's a, there's a huge carbon footprint, waste alone. Um, if you reuse it and rebuild it, there is a carbon footprint but it's less than it would be if you tore it down and build a new structure. Um, well, especially if the energy that you use is to make it energy efficient, then going forward, it's not bad. I mean, it's worth 
worth the effort. Yes, well, certainly. I mean, um, you know, again, it, it's a very small uh, aspect of this project that, you know, just sort of, uh, there's, this is where our committees are aligned. Yeah. And it's this simple thing that, you know, we're, we're trying to gain support from committees and boards in town to get these CPA applications um, to town meeting floor so people can make uh, a, a definitive choice on this building as a whole. In the past, uh, we've captured CPA money to do repairs and some maintenance. Um, the last time we went to CPA to get money was uh, eight or nine thousand dollars to do a roof repair, when in fact that wasn't enough money to do the repair. So it never got done. Oh. But any time that we did go to CPA to ask for money for maintenance on the building, it was approved. Um, the, the difference is now um, that um, we have new structures that we can safely and effectively work from. And this building, um, a, a historic treasure in my opinion, um, can be reused. And you know, to, to be able to do that at a more relaxed pace um, it, and, and for the future residents um, is so important uh, to pay attention um, to uh, what this town may need. We don't know what this town may need, but we, now we have a, a, a town of, of in excess of 5,000 people, um, but during the day, you know, 100,000 people drive by the building, and there, the malls are filled up with people. The commercial corridor here is packed, um, and the, the town hall is still, you know, 114 years at the same size. So what, what can we do to help? Um, we're just looking um, from any committee or board to uh, forward their uh, their support. Um, you know, it is you know, could could you make a motion and a support, you know, to support our uh, bringing the the issue of CPA dollars to town meeting? And so far, we have unanimous support from select board. Mm -hmm. We have unanimous support from uh, historic commission. We have a majority vote from Municipal Building Committee. Um, you know, we 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 do not take this lightly. This is something that that uh, has been put off and put off and put off because of our drastic need for safe space to work from. Now that we have what we need, um, you know, we we've, we've put together plans to refurbish the old Goodwin Building. Mm -hmm. uh, those. Uh, uh, plans are on the cusp of being sent out, so there'll be bids coming back on that. We don't know if it's if, if, it, if we need more money or not. Uh, but the plans to restore these historic buildings yeah. is is in motion. And um, so, just pausing for a second for Isabel's sake, for Glenn's sake, just so you know, Hadley recently put up this senior center. Mm -hmm. Hadley recently put up the library. Yeah. Hadley recently put up a North Hadley fire station. Um, in order to put up the library, had to tear down the old elementary school that was really old and really filled with mm. not so great stuff on the inside. I was on that particular building committee. Um, there wasn't really a lot of pushback saying you have to save this building. It was kind of a mess. Mm -hmm. Um, this building is completely different. Mm -hmm. It was built, what, 1880? This building was built in 1894. 1894. After the original had burnt down in its place. So the original one is probably buried underneath it. <laughs> so it has a lot of historical value and a lot of panache. I mean, there's something very efficient about this building. There's something super efficient about the library. At the same time, you don't have the same kind of charm. And style, right? One history, history. Yeah, kind of um, imprint of our history, which I think is really important. It's really important, but you can see why this is a controversial thing because some people are saying, "How does a small town come up with the money to fully it has to be restore this?" Effective. Yeah. Did you ever end up using that eight or nine thousand dollars, or you just never used it? It was returned to CPA. And how much money are you hoping, or what do you think? The, the application, well, we're splitting it up now. The original application was for four 
um, stabilization activities. Roofing, unstable grades, uh, battered granite work, and pointing of the brick. Those activities we estimated by, we took the, the original old Mohawk estimates and we took the more recent Drummy Roseanne Architects estimates. We put, added some cost escalation and you know, um, cost of living increases, all kinds of stuff to bring the total cost of those four activities to 1.36 million. Um, now we're looking at possibly, because we're getting pushback from the, the lack of a solid future plan after stabilization, we're looking to maybe split up the applications uh, so that we have one application for CPA money to do studying planning for architectural drawings to do those particular repairs mm -hmm. and uh, add on for phase two or, and phase three of what the next steps would be and at least rough projections of, of where we need to go after it's stable and you know what do we need to look at next do we need to look at updating the windows so that they're bringing it up to closer to the energy code so do we need do we need to start looking at the heating systems because it's going to need to be heated and cooled um, so there's a, a lot of those things that 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 have to be thought of and you have uh, the actual cost of the stabilization is where the bulk of the money would be spent. So um, the, the reason that we need so much money up front is for, it's, it's actually the planning and the activities. Yeah. And the timing is critical now um, that those roof repairs weren't done. Now we have active leaks. Mm -hmm. And it's not making the building soft yet. We've had a dry winter. We've really lucked out with a lot, you know, just been very dry. So spring, summer. Okay. I was there today and all the areas that were wet a month ago when I was in there are bone dry. So, and the floors are solid. There's, you're not taught, you don't have squeaks in these floors. It's solid. Um, um, it, will, will you put this on the, um, town meeting agenda for the spring do you have enough momentum is this uh, we we're we have enough interest from the townspeople and we're the most we're getting pushback from is uh, select board and CPA wanting want more focus study. they yeah. want more and we've already paid for two studies so I'm reluctant to say okay we'll do another study but in fact you know the the Massachusetts general law requires that these numbers are within 365 days. So we need to have, you know, if we apply for this money, we're gonna to try to separate out the, the architectural costs, yeah. but still ask for the stabilization costs so that it's there. Yeah. When, you know, when, the, when those studies are done, we need to get that roof repaired at the very least, the roof, by the end of the, you know, the, the summer season and into the fall, uh, so that it doesn't go through another winter um, leaking. Um, what about the foundation? Did I read somewhere that the foundation's got big cracks in it? Or the, 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 the east and west porticos are very unstable, but they're always unheated. So you always have frost, heat, you know, frost, you know, freeze thaw, freeze thaw, and they're always going up and down. The bell tower has that at the same, but it's a lot heavier because it, it has all of that weight of the whole bell tower on it. It is you know, it has moved, but not nearly as much as the east and west porticos. So, you know, we're guessing that, you know, once these architects come and say, they're going to say, we're going to have to take down these east and west porticos and redo. Those entrances on either side are out of code, and even the front entrance is out of code to the point where you can't even access the building legally. Um, you know, so that would have to be redone. Had to be redone anyway. Um, so we're hoping to incorporate those costs into the, the foundation stabilization. You know, when we look at the, the old Mohawk studies, it, everything would very, very comfortably fit into a million and a half dollars. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, we're asking for less, and we expect the cost to be about the same because it's been a bunch of years since that study was done. So, um, we, you know, the, the, it's critical, and, and we're, we're looking for support so that we can get the money approved and it's there when we need it and we don't want to have to wait for yet another town meeting to approve the funding and then it goes through a whole winter of leaking yeah. Yeah. and it's frustrating for me as a contractor 
I can fix that roof in a matter of hours. Uh -huh. And to have the to have to wait to have to wait and wait and wait for Knowing the money. the damage and, that's and, happening. And well, it, the damage that could happen. Yeah. And right now, it's like I said, it's there are leaks, but it's only when it rains and it's been dry. And you know, a lot of it could be avoided by just putting a bucket under it. Yeah. Spread some plastic out on the floor. Put a couple of buckets so that the any damage you know, stays within the roof that has to get repaired soon anyway. And, it, you know, honestly, you know, I was on that roof today, and it's plenty strong. It just needs to be replaced. It's 128 years old. The whole roof needs to be replaced? The whole, well, it's slate, and it's, the, the slate roof's life expectancy is 75 to 100 years, um, which, in my opinion, that's what we should do again, a new slate roof with a new technology. You're not using old barn boards to nail them to. Now you have some nice Advantech plywood or you have some really nice stuff that you can nail that slate to, brings that, that life expectancy probably even you know, farther into the future. Uh, but we don't know what town's gonna want. Uh, it was brought up by one of the municipal building committee members that maybe we should apply for just enough money to do an asphalt roof and that'll buy us 20, that'll buy us 20 years and we can do probably all of the other repairs with a Band-Aid roof. And then after all of the other repairs are done, then you can put a real roof on it. Mm -hmm. And that'll buy us time and save us a little bit of CPA money. There's all kinds of ideas out there. You know, your, your point about uh, prevailing wage, you know, I love to float the idea of selling the building to the Hadley Historic Society, which is a 501c3, and they can apply for the CPA money mm -hmm. and then get that work done, you know, at a regular rate instead of prevailing wage. Are there rules against that, though, just to sort of protect prevailing wage, or is that completely legal? No, if the town doesn't own it, and it's owned by a nonprofit, they can have the, done, so the, the, the work done at a regular rate. They do not have to pay prevailing wage. Um, so, but if they owned it, then could the town use the building? Oh, yeah, they or? could lease it right back to the town. They could, they could uh, purchase the town for a dollar, or purchase the building for a dollar, with a deed restriction that says town has first right of refusal if the uh, if the association goes under or if they choose to sell it, town has first right of refusal. Um, that could be a way, um, you know, first right of refusal to lease any any space in there. Um, there are so no. many things that could be done. Just need to be smart about it. So from now until well April and then May with the town meeting, what? What do you need us to deliver to you in order to move forward with this? Just, a, I mean, just a vote of support. Just a more, more support we have, the better. Again, we have the survey, and that shows the citizens, you know, the taxpayers, what they want. But so, do you just need like a, a letter in writing from us saying? Sure. I mean, that we would, support. Yeah, the, the the committee took a vote, and this is our vote. It was, you know, five four or five. So what wording do you need from us? The stabilization of the building and then um, retain Do you the have like a rough draft you could send to me that I can send to the other members of the committee? As far as the application CP for CPA well, money? Well, um, whatever you want. What or is it? what you need. Yeah. Um, in the letter. We're between drafts and I mean I would I would send you the 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 drafts of the CPA application so that you could support that and support that going to town meeting. Okay. Okay. So I'll, you know, once we get those rewritten in their new configuration, I'll, ha I'll, you know, we'll send them right okay. over. And our next meeting is April 13th, just so you know, for okay. time wise. All right. I want to make sure that's not too late. Uh, it should be, I think our, that should be all right. Uh, I had a town meeting. And we are, we have to go in front of CPA on the 27th. Of March? Of March. Mm -hmm. So. Do, well, if you can just tell us what to say. Well, <laughs> then, can we make a motion today to see where committee members stand? Sure. On supporting you? Yeah. I'm just wondering what this should sound like. Maybe yeah, what is it? Like you so why don't, why do you take like a 10 minutes to go write down something and then we will, we will, ha we will go right now? Yeah. So instead of like having to wait like one month to do this. Yeah, I'm, um, I mean, I, I, it, the thing is, it, it, it would be your committee supporting it. So I really don't want to put words in your mouth. As much as you'd like oh, to okay. have me, okay. as much as you'd like to have me say So what are the choices? It's that we support 
stabilizing the building? So support uh, a CPA application going to town meeting for stabilization and future planning. All right, wait a minute. Do you have any literature or background information on, uh, you had said that it is climate change positive to, I mean, it's in the interest of, of reducing our carbon footprint to support the renovation of this building versus taking it down. Do you have any do you like, have that in background information just because then, because that's our yeah. mission? Yeah, um, we have um, the original old, old Mohawk report. It's written right in there. I have it in my truck. I can go out and show it to you. Yeah. Um, it's simple. It's, it's an old report, but it's common sense. I mean, a lot of this stuff, you know, uh, I've been I've been of this camp since the 70s when the the you know the TV commercial with the Indian crying as the trash fell yeah, at yeah. his feet on the highway side, I, you know, and that had a deep impact on me. And this is what I, I've been practicing this recycling and everything that people throw recycling out the window and they're not doing it anymore. And you know, it's so disheartening for me because I know that it works and I know that it's important. Um, so let me try this. I'd like to um, ask all the members, and Kathleen, I want to make sure you're hearing this too, mm -hmm. um, to support a CPA application for the stabilization of Russell School. Yeah. I'll put that forward here. Now, we don't have every single member here, but we do have a majority of members here. That's stabilization and reuse. Stabilization and, and reuse. reuse. Um, because we, you know, we really believe, I, I believe, that it it is in the town's be best interest to to bring the town offices over to that building. Yeah. Um, the the original the the town hall that we're in is so close to the road, and the windows rattle when the. Oh, trucks you mean come not by. even use the white building? The white building, I think you know, you could make it into a hall of records, or you could make it in you know maybe planning board could use the building in its entirety, or maybe you know you could mm -hmm. you, you could get DPW to use the building. The, you know, we're not looking to yeah. um, to not use or or divest of that that property, right. but we repurpose it, repurpose it, and yeah. bring bring the town offices into a more usable and safe structure, which I believe the Russell School is. Yeah. Um, the The toughest things is going to be bringing it up to the energy codes, but those are so worth it. Well, remember now. Um, in our application to become a green community, we have uh, improved the energy codes. There so are stretch codes. They're not the most improved, but they're significantly better than right. they used to be. Right. So that is something for you to consider. I'm just wondering, Isabel, Glenn, any other comments about this, what we're looking at? Actually, I was talking with one of my teachers about this last period today. Um, so if you moved the town offices into the building and the old or the current town hall, would you ever consider like letting the school have classes in there? Because there's a lot of teachers that would love to have more space and stuff. In the current town hall? Or in or Russell anywhere school? Or anywhere. In mm. any building. Mm. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Um, that's been talked about by uh, our more than one of our committee members. Mm -hmm. um, the, when the new elementary school was put up, uh, the town voted to not use that building as mm -hmm. a school because it would take too much time and money to bring it up to code to use as a school. So um, the Russell School, the, right? right. Oh. So they, you know, that's when they voted to build the new elementary school. That's it was just too small for an elementary school yeah. that we, you know, d desperately needed, and mm -hmm. it would take too much work. So. You know, we did think at, at the very least that Hopkins Academy could have some administrative offices in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there was a lot of people talking about music classes and stuff. Yeah, um, art, art is specifically the thing I was... Because yeah. of the light. Yeah. It was my um, art teacher that I was talking about this with because a lot of teachers complain about it not being like right for an art room to be around like education yeah. classes. They also don't have good north light. They actually get it from the east in the art room. The teacher actually likes where the the light is coming from. Oh, um, yeah. Right. I it. I don't know how about how many in here have been in, inside that building. Mm. In the Russell School. In the Russell School. You've never been in there. I think a long time ago. 
There so is so PA much area. natural light in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, even on the north side, there is so much natural light. Yeah. And you, you would not believe how uh, bright it is. And when the, you know, there's a, uh, an article that was written in the Daily Hampshire Gazette when they first commissioned the building in 1894. Um, and the author of the article um, was reporting on how uh, the, the light would spill over the student's shoulder to hit the page. And it's just so, um, you know, sustainable. Um, you, don't have to, you don't have to run lights at all during the day in that building. It, you just save so much electricity. It really well, is it a magical feels so spot. so good yeah. physically to be yeah. in that much light. Abby, go ahead. Um, actually, for my high school ages, um, when I was in high school of age, I dropped out of high school, and there was a homeschooling center that was in the Russell School, mm -hmm. Russell Street building. And yeah. so I have a lot of beautiful memories there of like learning all sorts of different subjects, specifically like the arts that I was more focused on. So just knowing, like, and even back then, this was 2014 around that time, even back then they were still talking about, like, we had to leave the building because it was becoming unsafe to be inside. Um, and they eventually moved it to, I believe, like, North Amherst or a little past North Amherst. Yeah. But even back then, like, it was such a beautiful building that um, just the idea that we'd have to, like, no longer use it made me really sad, even though, you know, I was going to, like, graduate anyway. Yeah. Um, and I just think that if we can save it and reuse it for something, it's such a beautiful historical piece of Hadley that I think it would just be the best option, if possible. So this is going way back, but my mother went to school there during the start of World War II, and she actually got trained to be a German plane spotter. I don't know if that's just a rumor that she told us. Yeah. I think it was true, but she would sit on the different porticos, and I don't think she actually spotted any German planes, <laughs> yeah. to the best yeah. of my knowledge. But there's lots of family memories from yeah. lots yeah. of different families. I, it, the building is in the historic center of town, and but it, do, it doesn't have any historic preservation restrictions placed upon it. Yeah. So um, that, in some ways, is a bonus for the town because when you have to put an elevator shaft on it, you cannot put the elevator shaft within the building. It has to be outside of the footprint, and it has to be connected to the building with expansion strips so that it has no effect whatsoever on the building, which is unreinforced masonry. Uh, it's a, of a different size. It's a different uh, seismic code. Uh, the, the, any uh, activities in there um, are done under the uh, international existing building code. Mm -hmm. Many of the buildings in the valley here are just as old as that building, if not older. And they go through a different set of rules because they, they're not built to modern seismic code. Does that have a frame inside, like a wooden frame or something like that? It is two, it's like two separate buildings. It's the, the outer shell of the building is a double wall brick, yeah. and the inner is all wooden. Okay. Um, oh, the, interesting. The, the bell tower is, a, is like a separate structure, and within inside the bell tower is a wooden structure that held the bell and, and would insulate the swaying of the bell hmm. from the rest of the brick. Hmm. So it's it's very uniquely designed. Um, you know, it it was built before building codes, but it's the type of building that was, you know, building codes were modeled after. So uh, whoever and it seems designed it was really smart. Charles E. Parks of Boston did the architecture. It was the plans were approved in August, and the building was complete by December. Wow. wow. Um, and if you can imagine the those big, huge stones coming in on the rail bed, and they're loading them on carts and bringing them over with some horses or oxen or whatever. Wow. Mm -hmm. Some of that stone looked like the stone that they used in the Holyoke Town Hall. I know it's probably not, because that could be. That was actually shipped over from Italy, um, mm -hmm. which is an interesting story. Mm -hmm. But um, that building really has a lot of charm. And, you know, it's actually a pretty ingenious use if that became Hadley's town hall. Mm -hmm. Just moving well, us away from the road. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Giving when, more elbow room. When, when uh, you know, whenever you're sitting in, the, you know, they used, we used to have all these meetings at town hall. And whenever a big pack of bikers would go by or, you know, somebody was Jake breaking their 16, 18 wheeler, 
whatever that you know anybody zooming away away from that intersection it's a loud loud place to be is mm -hmm. eight feet from the center of route nine and it's so quiet over there in that building um so there's actually more building in the Russell building? Than yes, there's more square footage wow. and more more real estate. There's more there's more room for parking where many people who go to town hall have to park at Russell School anyway. Yeah. yeah. So Sorry, there's I that think issue. I stay in the time. I think yeah. you should move in that Yeah, and so. so let me try this again. Yeah. And for the sake of the committee here, I'd like to offer um, where we support a CPA a CPA approval for stabilization and reuse of the Russell School. So are we voting? So yeah. I All think that's favor? that's acceptable. So I think with that now I'll call the vote. Yeah. Okay. If you vote in favor. Right. Okay. So we have four that's a majority. A majority anyway. Yeah. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Yeah. So you need that in writing from us. Um, yeah, just send it to select board or however that works when you, you know, we're trying to get this thing to, or send it to CPA, I guess. Um, okay, they're, they're, send it to both. Yeah, they, um, you know, it, it, this type of activity certainly fits within CPAs. Uh, and who's in charge of CPA now? Is Ms. There? I think it's Ms. There. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, thank, and thank you, you for, for your support. For protecting um, that beautiful building. For well, you. thank you for the update. I mean, that gave us a lot of detail. Uh, there's a lot more. I mean, I could go on and on and on. I mean, the CPA. How much CPA money do we spend on cemeteries in town in the past few years? Three hundred fifty thousand dollars. Are the people who built Russell School buried in those cemeteries? Yes. <laughs> do you think that they would rather have us spend money on what they built for the living? <laughs> I think so. It's hard to speak on. Their it's behalf. hard to speak on their behalf, but I know. I know that you know the the, the some of the original uh, committee members for the original building of Russell School were West Russell. Yeah. You know, people who still live in town have you know they have relatives here, and it, you know, there are so many things I could go on and on and on, but I. And I'm sorry for going on and on about stuff that doesn't pertain to your here. No, but you gave a good, this, a good idea. This was actually pretty enlightening, and that's the first time I've heard anybody suggest that maybe, just maybe, there's a definitive town use. Yeah. Um, flip flopping the town hall. I think so, and in my opinion, that you know, when you look at the two buildings, the the, the our existing town hall and the the Russell School structure. To me, it's a no-brainer. It's farther from the road. It's super quieter. The oh, views when you're when you're up in that building and you're in that bell tower office and you're looking down at the Dunkin' Donuts and the little <laughs> houses and you can see Hopkins Academy, you can see the the Goodwin and you can see the church. It's just a perfect place for a town administrator office. Or um, it's a great you know you, you really can't change the interior of the building by too much per code. Yeah. Uh, the existing code. Group, doesn't allow you to change it. So you'd use partitions. Yeah. So only spending another moment on here, our library is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I've also spent some time recently in the Forbes Library in Northampton that has sort of that old world mm -hmm. charm and mm -hmm. feel. And it's just different. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. both, you that both buildings have value. Mm -hmm. There's something to be said for yeah. a building oh. that brings so much history, mm -hmm. yeah, preserves absolutely. so much history for the town. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where I got a bunch of this information, as yeah. Forbes. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Arts. Thank you for your support and, yeah. and pray for the future of the town. They deserve it. And it's not about me. I'll be gone by the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they need this building. No, but the old buildings are, they're like artwork, the way they were built. Yeah. I mean, these are you born pretty in buildings. Happy? What? Born and raised in Hadley, I've been here my whole life. I did, you know, I went out of town for a little bit, and I worked on Cape Cod for a while. Where building codes are a little different, but um, more stringent or just yeah, different? the wind codes are different, wind loads and, yeah. and stuff like that, uh, and, and soil compaction and stuff is a little different. But um, thank you so much for your time. I'll try not to. Thank you for your time. Thank I may you. sit here and listen thank to the rest of your much. meeting, but I'm, well, okay. it's also good to be able to uh, cross over with different committees. Right. I think that's super important. Really well. important. So the next item on our agenda is the open meeting law. We are going to table that until next month because one of the members who offered that, Kelly, is away. I'm taking care of something. Okay. 
Um, I will also tell you that I received an email today from the town administrator just saying that there have been some recent Supreme Court cases about open meeting laws mm -hmm. lately. So it's still to be determined and decided by the lawyers. Well, concerning that, does, I thought a while back I emailed it to everybody, the open meeting law, the stuff we have to know. Did I? Did all of you get that? I don't remember. Could you send resend it? Yeah, did Especially you? Especially since I don't remember. Okay. okay. I'll send it again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting that some of that is being decided almost on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, apparently, I mean, here's the form we were supposed to sign within two weeks of becoming a committee member that we had read the open meeting law, like we knew that. Yeah, well, and I know I had gone over to the uh, town clerk and signed some different forms. Also, I made a point, and I know this is not on the open meeting law, but if you haven't done the um, the online conflict, of, conflict interest. of interest, ethics, all of that, it's important that you do that and do send the form um, to Jessica Spank Neville. That's, that's important. I started it. I did it. I did it with this. It's, it's a lot about with the oil right. lines. So. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty common sense, actually. Yeah. But yes. It's yes. still good to read through it and be reminded that, you know. All right. So the next big one, and you're welcome to stay. You're welcome to go. It all depends on your timing, Dan. It has been quite a journey over the last couple of years we have worked on becoming a green community. So that is a designation from Mass Department of Energy Resources. And it looks like we're very close. Um, I sent you all, you as well, Isabel, I sent you all copies of what um, we received from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. They did a spectacular job working along with um, different members of the town especially things like collecting all the bills. I don't know if, if beforehand if they had a really good handle on what they were spending on utilities, but now we have a sense. Now we know. Um, I think the plan is almost 30 pages. Um, I don't know if there were any comments or things. I know I've read through it a few times. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if any other members have any thoughts, especially heading into next Wednesday I select do. board <laughs> meeting. And I did submit it, mm -hmm. so hopefully we'll be on the agenda. Mm -hmm. So a couple things, you know, that keep cropping up in my head. I'm glad you're here if you're on the building committee. What is high? There, we are. They're talking about one of our buildings being called Highway Garage. Do you have any idea what building that is? That's their Highway Garage is at the end of Middle Street. If you cross. If you go up 47 and you get to the blinking light, you go straight across, keep going south on Middle Street, and it's all the way down to the end of at the At the DPW? At the DPW. So yeah. at the DPW, there's the trailer where the offices are. Mm -hmm. Then there is a garage there. Yeah. And a couple other buildings, too. Do you know yeah, what there's those? a salt shed. There's a, a pole barn. Uh, there's our water treatment plant. Okay, so it's a garage that they keep trucks in? That's the it's the main yes yeah, the main garage where they you know yeah they'll they'll store a bunch of trucks in there in the daytime they're all out of there a bunch of them are out anyway um, that's where they they perform uh, service and, and repairs of many of the vehicles the, the trucks the school buses uh, whatever they need to fix goes in the garage and fix it there okay what is the building that they're considering rebuilding. I know that there's a, some sort of study group going yep. on. Yeah, it's that, that. It's that building. Okay. And it, what about actually, their office? It's just a trailer. Uh, again, you know, um, that that's going to be part of their study. They did get, uh, they collected a bunch of information and data. I don't know how far they got with it yet. Um, it's an exercise that we went through before these buildings went up. And, you know, it was one that I thought uh, was super important. But as the, the plan started to go together for the senior center and the North Hadley Fire Station, the library came in, and I don't want to say monkey wrench, because they did have $3 million from the state to get the library built. So it added another project to what 
the building committee already thought was important and the DPW was slated to be next when in fact it took so much of our attention to do the three buildings that did go up that sort of got put on the back burner. We did put a lot of money, the town voted a lot of money into, into equipment. So they did get a bunch of new yeah, trucks and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But to take care of those trucks and to keep them washed and everything and, and keep the, the workers safe, um, that's going to be our next that building, big yeah. bunch of money okay. that is going to be a tax increase. Well, and it's interesting too because we're sort of in the shadow of Amherst and Amherst is planning on some major renovations, oh doing God, a new school, doing a new library, doing a new DPW building as well. I think there's a fourth thing, the fire station yeah. is the it's fourth project. Dire need of and these costs when they go out mm -hmm. for the bids mm -hmm. are just coming in millions yeah. of dollars right. over. Right, right, right. 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 Correct. But they had estimated. Right, already yes. that the school the, the, expect, they the, amount, build. the, the price, price tag on these projects have gone up way up. And when Hadley is being used as an example of, wow, weren't we smart to build three buildings when we did? Um, the sooner the yeah. better, I guess. So looking ahead to next Wednesday for the select board meeting, you, every member of the um, Climate Change Committee is welcome to join in. Come in if you can. Um, we'll be meeting at about 6.30. Uh, what I will do is briefly go over the history of what we did. We will go over the work of what we did, including getting Energy Source as a new auditor and Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to help us write this. It's interesting because the top three planned improvements are Hopkins Academy with a number of different improvements, pipe insulation, building envelope, in retrofits, kitchen hood controls, steam trap survey, Hadley Elementary, pipe insulation, building envelope, retrofits, and kitchen hood controls, and then lastly, the town barn. Well, we're not using that well, term anymore, so draw a line. Well, so the DPW, you know, and... Well, it specifically, that's why I asked yes. you, it is the garage, it's not the offices. And at the very end of the report, she actually offers that correction. Okay, but wait, I think it's important that we refer yeah. to it. As the DPW. No, as the garage. highway, as the, well, or the DPW garage. DPW garage, is that fair? I guess we, we don't, I haven't seen any... Um, draft of any plans, and my guess is that they will put offices within a new garage building somehow. Okay. Okay. I mean, there's um, not but a that's, lot of uh, that's the here. actual now building they're referring to. Right. Like at first they were, somebody was calling something the town, but we just well, didn't know yeah. what these buildings but were. But I think right. now it's more straightened out. I will also say that if you take a look at this report, that's the centerpiece for our application for green communities, because there was five different criteria. Um, there was one, there's a couple of criteria about zoning, there was a criteria about stretch code, so we have a newer, more up-to-date building code. Um, and then we have this energy reduction plan. It's the select board, it falls to the select board to implement this. Mm -hmm. I know. Mm -hmm. So that's an important piece, and maybe they'll work with us for some guidance mm -hmm. on implementing mm -hmm. all of this. Because if we qualify, we'll get $130,000 well, from Mass But DLR. part of that, how to implement it, is in this plan. Yes. I mean, they Which do is not a lot of money. No, it's, no, it it's isn't. not. But, but apparently know. there's more. Once we are a green okay. community yeah. and we've used our 130 that we can apply... Because okay. somewhere in here it says, and, and Mimi said so at the last select board meeting, that it's never going to cost the town anything to do this work. That there are green community grants that we can keep yeah. applying for. And it's also really important for everyone to hear that Mass DOER is really working hard for every Massachusetts town to be considered green. I think there's about 300 of 351 cities and towns that are now green. I think last year was 290. So they're getting there. Yeah, okay, so uh, one thing I wanted to ask about where is the page? I'm just wondering if there's something on here that's a typo. Where is it? It was actually stunning to see electrical use at the schools. Both schools. It's like a quarter of a million kilowatts. Yeah. Well, and also public safety uses a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Where's the page? It's talking about the payback period. Mm -hmm. That's one of the last pages. The way things were Why can't I find it? The way yeah, things were yeah. prioritized is we looked at um, oh, here we go. payback times. Mm -hmm. So look at this past. very first one. I know it's four hundred and seventy years. Yes. No, wow. I, don't, I don't think that's right. No, it's absolutely right because it's really they just have to put that in to run it. And it does come out as 470 years. We are not going with that as one of the suggested recommendations over the next few years. Wait, it is, it is one of the recommend. No, heat no, pump. Uh, no heat pump. Heat pump. That's different. And plus, um, yeah, they're not. They're not going with there. Yeah, that's for the town hall. Oh, okay. Yep. Oh, right, because you might have been. But most of the other things are much tighter um, payback periods in the next one, two, three years. So if they make these investments, mm -hmm. they'll get a tight payback. Again, for people who are watching this at home, we want to remind everybody that this does not cost the town money. Um, ever, uh, it will save us money. Energy Source um, did the review basically for free. I'm hoping that maybe in the end they'll get some work. There are some other agencies that are very interested in doing some of this energy reduction work for the town. But it all seems like a very good thing for for our group to promote. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. Thank you. Oof. I know you have put so much into this yes. work. For this yes. has been a real heavy lift. Uh, yes. You probably should uh, yeah. have a celebration. Yeah, it passes. Yeah. yeah. Jack, you've been putting a lot of time into this. Well, Hadley is one of the holdouts of, of, of adopting stretch code. You know, you look at all the surrounding towns, they've all adopted the stretch code. You well, know, we did. We did. It took a while, but it passed. Last yeah. year. It took a yeah. while. Yeah. yeah. But when we brought it, it passed pretty easily, actually. Yeah. Well, Mark Rabinsky has been helping us mm -hmm. with this process. He is now the deputy director of Mass Department of Energy. So he has really, I think it's like two levels up. Um, he's going to try to make it next week. I don't think we can count on him. He's been supportive, but he is saying that he probably has to let, let us go. He's a member of, he, he lives in Hadley. He lives in North yeah. Amherst. Gotcha. Oh, North Amherst. He lives in North Amherst right by Puffer's Pond. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, so my next one will be very short, Catalina. We are having cleanup day on March 18th. Now it scares me to take a look at next week's weather report. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The snow? <laughs> We're making up for loss for no snow. But right now it's scheduled for March 18th from 8.30 to 3 p.m. Please pass the word to your teachers, anybody at the school. Um, everybody is welcome, and if you go to the tiny URL that's listed on this week's agenda, it's easy enough to sign up. Um, so far, I think we have about 25 people signed up. Is that up. typical? How many? Um, last year, I think we had 27. The, um, the company that runs our transfer station, Solid Waste Solutions, offers us free drop-off that day. So you can pick up anything, well, within reason and drop it off there. There Last year there were quite a few tires that seemed to make it through on that day. I have a question. So would that count as volunteering? Because there's multiple clubs for volunteer hours at my school that I think if you were to contact them, there would be a lot of students that would get involved. So yeah, can you do that? If, if you can spread the word. Can you be our okay. liaison? Yeah. And, um, and uh, Annie McKenzie yeah. has this. Mm -hmm. So she knows and she's going to put it in the newsletter for Happy Families. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you can spread the word, yeah. by all means, just have people sign up because um, the transfer station doesn't really want people just saying, I'm here, you don't know yeah. who I am, but I just want to drop off a lot of stuff. So they actually want... Do you feel like that's something you can do on your own or should we contact the principal or the superintendent? Um, for Key Club, I would be able to do it, but I think for National Honor Society, it would be smarter if some someone else were to email one of the heads of it. Is that a, a Ruth Ann? Who's in charge? Of uh, Ruth Ann is the, in charge of the Key Club. Um, National Honor Society is run by Lindsay Roberts. 
What any other clubs that you think would? Um, those are the only two that involve volunteering. Um, but could it also just be put out to the student body in general? It could be, but I don't think there would be a lot of interest in it. Okay. Just like knowing my some of the people. <laughs> yeah, enough said. We are being recorded. Yes. Um, okay, that would be great. I've already put it out to. Annie McKenzie, so I can turn that right around and send it to Ms. Roberts and okay. Ms. Fitzgibbon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I can put April Camuso on it yeah. too. Okay. I think that would be good. Okay. So April, um, is so it Lindsay Roberts? Yes. Okay. National Honor Society. And then Ruth Ann. Okay. Sure thing. I'll try to get that out tonight or tomorrow to them. You see another 6 a.m. email coming through here. Um, okay. Uh, and you are up, Catalina. Tell us where things are at with the uh, Cultural Council and compost and everything yeah. else. So uh, I already have the, the blurb that we are going to be sent. Um, we are doing a, a project for compost. Mm -hmm. uh, it's promoting, encouraging everybody to do compost because it, uh, it's, it's the doable step to protect the environment. The doable. Everybody can do it. You don't have to go and you can do it with your own hands. Simple. And the transfer station we have compost here. And the farms have uh, compost. Everybody can have it in their own house if you want in their own house. So this this project is, is to encourage everybody to do compost. Knowing that this is the doable step to curb climate change. And um, so we are going to go through the arts. We are going to call all the community to submit uh, images of art, uh, images about uh, the, uh, the compost bringing life. So um, with that, we are going to create a collage. Um, and then uh, we are going to do a big banner that said, Compose brings life. And postcard that said, Compose brings life. And in the back saying, um, inviting everybody to compose because um, is the, the big reduction of methane and uh, methane, and uh, that's one one of the things that also I wanted to say with Kathy, if we can have um, uh, one of the, the, the QR that I was suggesting, like in our in our flyer, uh, put a QR that people uh, can um, um, put their email, so we give information, but at the same time we can send the links about how to compose. You know, like, do we have that in, the, in, in our website? Yeah. All right. So it's like, mm -hmm. if just having that information. I have no we, idea how to do a QR, so. Oh, I, I, I have an QR, I can do it. But the okay. problem is, 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 I want is like people, like uh, the other day, uh, our select board, he said like, have a compose, but it's nothing coming from there. I sent him five. Yeah, you know, uh, videos of exactly. composting. I mean, you know, right. depending on who you talk to, that's how many right the intricacies. So of I'm just wondering, do you know how active the compost bin is at the transfer station? Is it pretty active? People are are using it. Is someone it getting just, filled up? Uh, someone just mentioned to me that they use it. I yeah, I think you know okay. people that yeah. use it. I use it. Okay. When you've opened that up, how full is it? Oh, not too much. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. And and I have seen plastic bags oh. there. I say like a, And it's not compostable bags. It's, of course, yeah. they are not going to. Be. Well, thank God for yes. you know Adam. So that that's the thing. That's the thing that we need to you know like a, encourage people like. Clean compost. Clean compost and mm -hmm. things like that. So that's the project, and we are going to right now call everybody to submit the. Uh, uh, our images, our work um, that we can then use for creating that um, a banner. Do you think this is something that Ms. Sousey would get into? As, yeah. Mm, Who is that? The art teacher. Oh, Robert. Yes. So we can send this e uh, email to her to say, like, could you encourage your student to submit something? Yeah. And then we are going to create also postcards. Oh, so then, then to put it all around town. I don't know. Yes, yeah. So, um, Catalina, are you going to be getting in touch with the elementary school for art? Um, yes or no? If they give me, they give me the email. I can just send it to them. Yes. Okay, okay. I'll find out. Yeah. I think some of us, you know, it seems like something the kids would have fun with. Yes. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just for the sake of some new people here tonight, right. can I mean, your background is all art and such, but can you just share briefly uh -huh. like what brings you to using art for compost? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, so I am a director of Multi Arts. It's a, a, a program that we work with children in the arts, and we use all the arts for the children. And I'm also I'm a musician, so I am totally immersed in the arts. And uh, I have always known that arts open the hearts for everything. You can sell anything if we have a beautiful image or you know like a, so um so that's that's why like i oh, have been always using the arts to be able to to bring awareness and that's the thing we need to bring awareness of something that is doable and and that it really make a huge difference huge difference so um what's the timeline on this all right i would say like um um People have to submit R by March 31st. Oh, that's coming up fast. Wow, that's yeah. so soon. Well, what are they doing? They're sending their art by that time? Art, by, but yeah. So how about this for a suggestion? How about by Earth Day? You yeah, have to is have there any way to give a little more time? Of course. Of course. I, I'm just like, like, any... like a, because the more you leave time, the people forget. If you have like, oh, I ha um, put it in the words, and people, oh, we have to do it. People will do it quick. You know? But there's something about Earth Day. Okay, which day? Just, which day is Earth Day? Uh, is it April. It's April. during April usually. April twenty second or something. Okay. Like that. Here. okay. April twenty second. Are you gonna Google it? Earth Day. Oh. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. I mean that could be. Like an Earth Day focus right. project yeah. for the right. schools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All day, Earth Day, April 22nd. Perfect. So the deadline is that as soon as we have that, uh, I, I, we will have a committee, whoever wants to come and take a look at submission and say, do a select, a, a select, uh, select of the arts. Uh, maybe like maybe we can take. I, will, I have to ask with the, with the, the designer, I've already talked to her. And uh, she said exactly how much we have, how we have, people have to send that that information. We may we may select twenty, we may select ten images. So we create a banner that we would put it in the guard, in the transfer station, and the postcard that will go all around town. So we will be needing help for several things. Uh, first, I will need help. Uh, it's in the um, everybody when we will send this. Send it to your mailing list. So as soon as uh, <coughs> I don't know how, uh, if if uh, you mean requesting artwork. Yeah, we the, 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 the little PR calling art, calling for images um, to um, help us to to create the banner and the postcards. Are you going to send us an email? I already sent it. Okay. But but um, I can send it. Please uh, send it to everybody. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and with a new new date. Okay. Because it will be a different date. So if everybody commit at least to send it to 10 people or 20 people, and to the, because everybody's an artist. Everybody's an artist. Will you also send it to Hadley Learns and Hadley Grassroots and some of the other Hadley? No idea groups. who. who, who mm. uh, if you send it to me, then You'll I'll send it to Hadley Learns oh, and I'll perfect. put it on uh, Facebook, the community page. Grassroots? I thought you were a Facebook. On oh, Facebook, yes. It's I mean, on Facebook. Facebook. Okay, but is yeah. the Hadley Facebook something like that? It's called it? Hadley Grassroots. I, oh, I could have maybe. Sworn I saw it here. Yeah, maybe. I think I am there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't know that have that name at Grassroots. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So um, that's that's the most important thing because as soon everybody knows, you get involved, and then then that then we can get something moving. Uh, I will be needing help is like checking the emails. Because like I, I there is like three weeks that I'm going to be away completely without internet and anything, so like happened like last year, so I I can cr I can create a, a template yeah. that say hi thank you so much for submitting this, uh, we will let you know by April. Okay. Uh, so I'll help you. I just need to know where the email. Excellent. To check. Yeah, is it should be the email uh, the. Oh, the Hadley mm -hmm. climate change. Yes. Will you be here on April 13th, the next meeting, or no? Are you going to be away? Yes, I think I am here. I, okay. I come back April 9th. All right. I will come back. And I know the agenda that went out to you, it had this month's date on the bottom for our next meeting, and that's incorrect. It should be April 13th is our next yeah. meeting, every second Thursday. Mm -hmm. Right. 
uh, then we will need help distributing the postcards when we have everything distributing the postcard everybody take 10 and wherever you go you leave it every public places every like the library the senior center the your friends uh, give it in the in the, the post office to, because the postcard will go to say join us let's compose everybody let's compose hopefully hopefully we'll move people towards this that is so important so do you have like a tagline or a theme for this? Yes. Compost is life, or do you yes, have yes. something? Yeah, compost brings life. Okay, compost yeah, brings compost life. Compost brings life. Uh, join us, okay. and then it's had a climate change, had the yeah. climate committee, yeah. And in the back is, uh, I would like to have some links for people to come and take a look how you compose. Right, there are a whole bunch of them on our website. Yes. So if you go there and click, right. you'll, you'll see. Yeah, well, I will ask you to keep it. But that, that, that will be like for the, when we are going to do the design and everything. Okay. Yes. When are you away, Catalina? I'm going March 24 until uh, April 9. Oh my God, right. And where are you going? You're going to Colombia. Meditation retreat. Oh, wow. Zero, like completely. No talking. Kind of place. No talking. No internet. Nothing wow. serious. Good for you. So I have to have everything ready, because you. you disconnect from the whole world. Wow. Yeah. You know, where do you go for this? Um, Barry, Massachusetts. Yeah. Okay. Inside meditation of Barry. I wasn't sure if you were allowed to say. Oh no! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me see. Um, Ah, the, well, so, so if anyone wants to help in selecting the, 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 the images, welcome to do it. The distribution, check the email. And um, you said for the money that we are going to use, we need to do a, like a little workshop about Compose, remember? Yeah, um, yeah. So, <laughs> so how well, are we, we going need to do this? To, we need to do outreach, a work... A, you know, a demo demonstration could be one of the things. I I thought we could do it at the Asparagus Fair Festival. Oh, is that happening again? This yes. Year? You know, is. set up a table. But they don't have everything established on that. They don't they, have the dates yet? Well, I think they have the date of when's graduation at Hopkins. I'm is, not sure. I'm sorry. Okay, but no, that's all right. It's usually like the first weekend in June, okay. last weekend in May, something right around there. I think there. that's the easiest place to do it and where there's the most traffic. I mean, there's if we great said, traffic oh, there's going to be a composting. They're not going to do it on Memorial Day weekend, are they? No, I don't okay, think so. Okay, so it would be the first, probably. Yeah, because first uh, the, we cannot print that without the money. You know, we, we, we got money from the Cultural Council, but that pays only for the designer. So we will have the designer, but we don't have money to print the, the postcards, and we don't have money to print the, the banner. So what I need from you is an invoice. Okay. For yeah. an amount of money, All right. stating what the money is for. Okay, and that's it, and they will give us the money to be able to print. Right. All right, perfect. And before, but but would be before, before you do the workshop, will they give you the money before you do the workshop? That's the thing that I'm... I'm Wait, what does the workshop have to do with it? To give the money, to the, to, for them to give us the money. I don't understand the question. Okay, so I understand that uh, to be able to get that money, you need to do a workshop about compost. But did that... No, no. No, no. Oh, okay. No. All right. We, we have the money. Yes. Okay. The way we get the money is every year I apply for this recycling grant. Yes. And... Um, to fulfill, to get certain points that have to do with compost, mm -hmm. there are a, a few different things we have to, we have to offer compost mm -hmm. bins, we have to offer it at our transfer station, mm -hmm. and we have to do some kind of composting outreach. Mm -hmm. That's to get the points in, oh, in okay. the okay. grant application. All right. So, I can, I can release the money because it has to do with compost. Oh, okay. But to get the points, yes. next year when I apply, we, this, uh, we okay. need to do some kind of demonstration, oh. which would be really easy to be, do. Uh, yeah, I'm great. I mean, last year we had a table at the festival yes. and it had to do with that declaration. Right. So this year we can do composting. Perfect. So that fulfills yeah. that. Because in order to get the grant money every year, we have to accumulate a certain number of points. Oh. And so far, each year, we've accumulated the bare minimum. 
but we have gotten some money. Okay. So, thank um, you. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe I don't know it's something in the school, like if 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 there is something that we can create with you about composting. Okay. Yeah. Because it would be yeah. so so in what one of the class. I'm in eleventh grade. I'm a junior. Okay. All right. Yeah, and also, I just want to say it's really good that you're here. This is something we've been trying for for a while, and it's great to have somebody from the school with us. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you have any particular thoughts or things you're hearing and can take back to the school. Hello. I haven't had um, a chance to sign it, so yeah. I'd like to sign it. Probably the um, trash pickup and the compost. Those are two great things to take back. So, Jack, if, if, if I can send you this and you can send it to, to that group? Yes. Yeah, to see, yeah. like, and yeah. if you can encourage people to okay. submit things, yeah. 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 that would be great. Yeah. Just okay. like anything, anything yeah. that, that, that uh, uh, there's nobody else anything that brings life, you know, like uh -huh. plants, no, uh, even worms if they want, or, you yeah. know, like yeah, a flower, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. anything. Yeah. 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 Great. So expect a couple of emails from me. One will be about um, the trash pickup mm -hmm. and the volunteers for that. And then in a little while, um, I'll get all the materials from Catalina and I'll send that to you okay. as well. Yeah. This is, this is great. Yeah. This is a real See, cool Thank you to so have much for doing this. Somebody in school. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, Glenn, I'm just wondering what are some things, like what class is this for? It's for a. Uh, a class that's focused on the human dimensions of natural resource management, but also um, basically any kind of resource management. Um, so the goal is just to see how that functions on a local level, which is what I was interested in. I thought this committee would be a good way to see just sort of how things get done. Um, is this for environmental science? Or yes, okay. yeah. That's your major? Yeah, it's more an applied, it's um, technically natural resource conservation, but that's basically applied in environmental science. So what are some things you heard tonight that Anything are, are of value? Um, I think the um, one thing is just um, using the um, historical value of the Russell School, I think, is a really interesting component of like um, efforts to keep it. Mm -hmm. I think it relates to how people using the way people value um, local features to inspire them to make change or um, do some action. It relates not only to, you know, buildings, but also everything. Yeah. You would probably find it interesting when we talk about improving the dike. Mm. Don't you think? Yeah. Protecting our natural resources. And that's a big job. Yeah. Well, Holly, that's... that's um, Almost bigger than Russell School. I, oh, it's bigger. Can, can I ask yeah. a question about our meeting with, um, was it Brian? Yes. Brian. So, Brian came two weeks ago yep. and met with us to talk about, he works with municipalities. He basically has started a for-profit organization to uh, funnel some of his personal money that he's inherited into municipalities to kind of um, springboard their uh, solar. solar work. So he, he can't work with Hadley, and I didn't understand quite why. So he could work with Hadley for the library for a small system because he's only allowed 25 kilowatts, a relatively small system, but Hadley could decide to put on 50 kilowatt hours themselves, plus Brian's 25, gotcha. and that would work. So gotcha. he knows, and the library director, Patrick Barrezo, is tuned into this. Okay, good. So he knows. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I was just, you know, it's like some of it is so new to me, the whole, all the language yeah. and the, yeah, it was just... And I will tell you, um, everyone here knows, my, in last November I had to put on a new roof on my house. It's about 20 years old. And I kept one of the solar arrays. It's about seven years old. And I was allowed 
because of the re-roofing to put on a new solar array and it's just been tremendous. The sun pouring in, especially a day like today. I haven't seen my numbers for today, but I know that there have been some sunny days in the winter, which are pretty rare, mm -hmm. uh, that the whole array is uncovered and snow free, that I'm making 40 kilowatts. That's just amazing. So what he's saying is that his new panels are a lot more effective than the old ones. It's the same area. And they're three times mm -hmm. as effective. I just, oh. it like melts my heart. It's amazing that it's that good. Mm. So I was wondering, that woman that we met with, where are my notes? Claire? Yes. Yeah. Are we going to invite her mm -hmm. to Now that her? we have the final report, yeah. we can send it to her. Yeah. So I was going to share that. I'm going to wait until the select board adopts it. Okay. And then send it. Okay. I just learned my lesson a few times over. Yeah. It was right. really not pretty. You don't it, jinx it. A couple of weeks ago, I was allowed to present, and it was just, it wasn't, it did not go well. Okay. No, not pretty. So this time I'm trying to get better about being prepared. Should we also at some point like educate um, residents of Hadley about like community solar and like joint like they don't they don't necessarily yeah. have to get solar panels. They can just they can join yeah. a community solar. Yeah. Is there community solar available in Hadley? Right yes. And I just I've been going through the whole process. You have? Yeah. Can you send around information? I'm yeah, because that's, okay. that's kind of news to me. Too. Yes. You have to have an energy audit first. Okay. And then, or something? Yes. Okay. Yes. And I, I did. And there's like all different rebates after that. Everybody has to go for um, an energy audit first. And then you can qualify for certain rebates. But also you can then... Maybe you don't need, maybe you don't need an energy audit in order to get... Community solar. Maybe that was just recommended. I was like, okay, and it does decrease your bill by like ten percent. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Because right now I, well, I live in an apartment I'll, I'll and I rent, you. so I don't know if I. But can. no, no, you can. It's just like what happens is your bill gets rerouted through this company. Mm -hmm. and right. Like I bought into the community electrical aggregation thing mm -hmm. and I'm buying 100% green electricity mm -hmm. through that. Maybe that's what, what this is. Then. That sounds a lot like what I'm doing. I'll, I'll, I'll send but you But I equation. thought what you were talking about was a solar. Cause it's called community solar. Yeah, that's just different. Saying. Oh, really? This okay. thing's called Hadley Community Electricity Aggregation or something like that. Mm -hmm. and it's a combination of Solar and wind. Uh huh. Are we done with the agenda? I think we are. Okay. I think at this point, and Isabella, is it okay if I'm communicating with Ruth Ann and with Lindsay to mention your name as the contact person? Yeah, that's fine. no problem. Okay, just making sure. Um, I move that this meeting come to a close. I second. Aye. Right. Mm -hmm.